sorry for the slight delay. Uh, clerk of the board, will you please call the roll? Freelder Carter? Present. Freelder Estrada? Present. Freelder Hudak? Here. Freelder Jallo? Here. Freelder Kowalski? Here. Freelder Mirabella? Present. Freelder Wright? Here. Vice Chairman Granados? Here. <coughs> Chairman Bergen? Here. Chairman, you have nine freeholders present. Thank you. Clerk of the board, please lead us in the prayer and salute to the flag. Humbly we ask God, the giver of peace and the lover of charity, to give the entire family of nations true agreement with his will, to grant the light of his spirit on all who work for justice and peace. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, tonight the first order of business is a presentation Chair by... Chair oh, I'm sorry. Clerk of the Board, please read the Statement of Compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Thank you, sir. The chairman wishes to announce that pursuant to the requirements of New Jersey state statutes annotated, Title 10, Chapter 4, Section 10 of the Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of this meeting of the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Union has been given by mailing the annual meeting schedule for the year 2016, along with periodic changes necessitated by circumstances to the newspapers circulating within the County of Union who are designated to receive such notice and by posting the annual meeting schedule for the year 2016 in the administration building and further by filing the annual meeting schedule for the year 2016 with the office of the county clerk. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Now I'd like to call upon freeholders Carter and Mirabella for tonight's first presentation. Good evening, everyone. It gives me great pleasure to be able to stand here and really acknowledge a group of young individuals who have embraced a concept that was started three years ago. Tonight, we are going, we have the pleasure of recognizing a winning group and all um, from our UC STEP, Un Union County Student Training Enrichment Program. This program is about all getting all of our students from the 10th and 11th grades. We had about 10 students <coughs> from various high schools throughout Union County come together and it was in May, correct? May, no, December. Okay, confusing my dates. May we ended the last program. <laughs> there you go. In December, this past December, um, which we met at Kane University and they came out to do a civic project. And what they were able to do is not just schools come out and say, listen, let's stay with our st the students that we came out to school with, but they were mixed up by, they were given colored shirts, um, they were able to get into teams. We had 15 students, um, on a t about 15 students to each team, we had about 10 teams, 11 teams, let's see, I get that <laughs> correction coming across every time, 11 teams. Um, so can, you can see how many students were embraced the concept. They came out, they got together, they were doing some um, team building to get to know each other because many of them did not know each other. They came from all different schools. We had uh, parochial schools, we had charter schools, we had public schools. We invited um, students from every high school um, in Union County and we had about 200 and nine or 200, about 209, 210 students that participated throughout the day. Um, but one of the projects that they had to come up with um, from the time they got there is as they were having lunch in their group, they came up with a civic concept that we can launch and actually do here in the county and everyone can participate. And we had five different projects that went and we have one winning team and it was our red team that was truly successful. And it was the Garments and Gear Greatness for Years. If you get an opportunity, please go to our website and take a look because the videos are still up. You can see all of the teams. We're not voting anymore because that's over. And I'd like to take an opportunity to call our red team, our 
garment and gears, greatness for years, team to come on up. Come on. Look, they're all here. Okay, you guys are not looking as excited as you were a half an hour ago. That pizza got you. Huh? <laughs> as you can see, these individuals, we have representation from Barack Obama High School, Cranford High School, John E. Dwyer Academy, Linden High School, New Providence High School, Scotch Plains Vanwood High School, St. Mary's High School, Union County Vocational Technical High School, Union High School, Rosedale Catholic High School, and Plainfield High School, who were all, who were all part of their winning team. Um, I'm going to, versus me trying to say everybody's name, I'm gonna pass the microphone down and you can introduce yourself, okay? Taylor Diggs, Scotch Plains Vanwood High School. Erin Reedy, Cranford High School. Hannah Caminetti, New Providence High School. Brendan Birch, Linden High School. Jay Canavan, Scotch Plains Family High School. Jaquan Mile, Johnny Dwyer, Technology Academy. Sean Fair, Union County Vocational Technical School. Marissa, oh, Marissa Berrios, Rosa Catholic. Hannah Criolo, Union High School. Shadley Moyes, St. Mary's of the Assumption High School. Mm. Only because I always like to cheer on our youth. Let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> it takes a lot for them to get up here. The concept that they presented and presented to the group, um, and actually everybody got up and presented their idea. Um, they were one of the five choices um, when we left that day. Those five choices went up on the internet, and amazingly, Amazingly, within four days, we had more votes than we had the entire total votes from the previous year or the year before. So the voting ended exactly at midnight on December the 30th, and the garments and gear greatness for years had a total of 27,913 votes out of a possible 58,301 votes. Amazing. We didn't get 28,000 votes last year. So this team, you guys really were able to go out, get your school to vote for you, um, to also get your neighbors, because anybody could go on the website and actually vote. So let me give you a little bit of what their idea is. They're going to be focusing um, on giving less fortunate athletes equipment needed to excel in sports. And we know how when we go out and we exercise, but also making sure that our youth have the needs, things that they need to really be able to perform well and to practice. By collecting items and fundraising to purchase additional supplies, the goal of this program is to give underprivileged athletes the opportunity to play a sport by providing the necessary gear. So they want them also not just to have a football, but they want them to have the gear necessary to be safe. So we appreciate you coming out, we appreciate you embracing this, and we appreciate all the hard work. But guess what, the work just starts. What's gonna happen now is we will be launching this. Chairman, I'm not quite sure when you're gonna launch it off, but I'm sure you're gonna let us know. It will be launched and it will be launched throughout the county. So if you're sitting here tonight, you can also help by you know embracing their concept, going out there and making collections. We will have a kickoff day, is that correct? We will have a kickoff day and it will run probably for about two months, two or three months, and then we will be partnering up to make sure that we can make sure those that need the equipment and all, they're gonna get it. So thank you so much for your idea. Oh, I think I, I, th I might have handled this okay, you know? <laughs> Anybody have a, one spokesman for the group that want to say anything? Yep. Wonderful. Okay, this was the brains behind getting all the votes, but I'm not going to say anything. Um, we would just like to thank the UC STEP program, first of all, for giving us this opportunity to help children that are less fortunate and that, you know, want a future within sports, athletics, or, you know, anything that they cannot reach. And we would also like to thank you all for coming out to see us. And um, I personally like to thank everyone in the red team for your amazing ideas and you know just teamwork and support. Thank you. We do have resolutions congratulating them. I'm not going to read it word for word, but it does say 
thank, on behalf of the Union County Board of Chosen Freeholders, we want to thank you um, for your idea, for, you know, for also embracing the program. And you know what? Great job. How's that? We want to take a picture now. Has anybody not want to take a picture with us? <laughs> oh, I didn't think so. Wonderful. Yep, yep. Thank you, Freeholders. I'm going to ask Freeholder Mirabella to uh, please make a, a second very special presentation for the evening. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, nothing brings me greater pleasure than to honor students and firemen in the same evening. And I have the very special honor and privilege to present this resolution to not only a fantastic firefighter over 50 years of service, but a great friend to me personally and my family. And I want to call up uh, Rocky Carr. Come forward, please. 50 years of service in the Roosevelt Park Fire Department. And I'm also, I'm also honored to uh, invite uh, Chief Signorella from the Roosevelt Park Fire Department too. Uh, there's several presentations for Rocky tonight. And I can tell you, you know, nothing brought me uh, more pride and more uh, pleasure than when I was a councilman in Roosevelt Park and uh, had the opportunity and the, and the honor of being the fire commissioner for six years. All six years I spent on the Roosevelt Park Council was uh, as the fire commissioner, and it was wonderful. I don't know if that's ever been duplicated, Chief, but it's something that I, uh, I took great honor in um, being the fire commissioner every year. And um, I know there's uh, many members of the department here, too. I want to thank all of them for their service over many years. I'm going to invite them up in a little bit uh, for a picture as well. I'm also uh, very honored to have Rocky's family here, too, his wife, Lil, and uh, kids and grandkids and wrestlers and all that, so uh, they're all here and it's, uh, it's wonderful. We kind of grew up and had a great friendship, the Carl family and the Mirabella family in Roosevelt Park. Uh, so 50 years, Rocky, I, um, I want to just tell you that I was um, 18 months when you, old when you joined the fire department. <laughs> 18 months old. Uh, which, uh, you know, uh, really speaks to, you know, your dedication and your leadership over many years and you know, I, I, uh, Roosevelt Park's been in, in very good hands uh, with the, the men and women of the fire department there and Chief Signorella's leadership. But certainly with your participation over 50 years, that's uh, miraculous. Uh, and and I, I'm not going to read this resolution, although it says a lot of good things about you, Rocky. 
Um, I am going to turn it over to Chief Signorelli. He has a couple of other presentations, and then we'll take some pictures. So, Field of Marabella was there 18 months. I do remember going on my first fire truck drive when <laughs> I was probably about five or six years old. Probably don't remember. My, oh, my uncle Richie was a member of Lorraine Host Company, and uh, Rocky took me for my first ride in Lorraine's Engine 1. So, so you, you have uh, said it all, Field of Marabella, about Rocky. He's still very active to this day, and we had a little fire on uh, Tuesday. And Rocky pumped the engine one. He responds during the day. I, I'm not sure about after 11.30, after the news, he comes out as much uh, <laughs> between 11.30 and 7. But he's been there a couple of times in the middle of the night. But, but he's earned his, uh, earned his keep for 50 years. So it was actually, was it the 23rd of uh, December? He had, it was his 50 years of uh, 2015. So congratulations, Rocky. Here's a couple of presentations from... from uh, our president of the United States. Um, congratulations on receiving President's Volunteer Service Award, and thank you for helping address the most preceding needs to your community and our country. So it's from Barack Obama, the President of the United States. All right. I, I still don't know all these years, it, you know, Nelson, don't call me Rocky or Rocky, but maybe tonight I'll find out after, like I said, I know him since I've been four or five years old. Maybe he'll tell me why we call him Rocky. But, um, and Rocky was on a, a truck committee. We purchased a truck in 2005, and we surprised him. It's probably one of the first times, and I, 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 I made the call to where he, when he's driving the apparatus by his arm, not by his armpit, but by the door, <laughs> it says Rocky on the, uh, on, on the truck, so he's earned it. And here Rocky is one as a, a pin, so I'm not going to pin you. Take it and uh, put it in your pocket and don't lose it. I was carrying it like I was your best man tonight. <laughs> so congratulations, Rock. All right? Thank you. And thank, you, and thank you to the Freehold Board for recognizing it. Thanks very much, Chief. I'm going to ask Lil if she'll come forward and then um, to be in the picture. Maybe, um, and then we'll, uh, I want to take a couple of pictures, yeah, Jimmy. One, yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay.
is Rosell Park the volunteer of fire? Chief, take care. Thank you, Freeholder. And I, as I Thank never miss an Council. opportunity to say, one of the things that makes Union County great is our volunteers, both at the county and the municipal levels. We just we just couldn't have the great county we have without them. Um, now I I'm going to give a very special presentation to someone who's unaware he's getting it. Uh, if Freeholder Jallo could meet me up front for a moment. I just want to take this opportunity to acknowledge my predecessor in, in the chairman's chair, Freeholder Jallo, who did such a wonderful job last year on behalf of this county. Just a couple of the, uh, the items, things that, that the county uh, accomplished last year, his UC Act program, which is a wonderful success, is continuing this year. Um, there, there was... Uh, the Workforce Development Board, which helped bring job opportunities to citizens here in Union County. Again, a very successful program. I'm not going to go through them all. It was just a wonderful year. Once again, I thank you for all the guidance and assistance you've given me since I've been on this board. And on behalf of all the freeholders, present you with a plaque to commemorate your year as our chairman. Thank you. Thank you. I just, I just have to think there's nothing that you do as chairman can be done alone. It requires the support of the entire freeholder board. So any accolades that you give to me are accolades that you all deserve. So I thank you all for your support all year long. I thank the residents of Union County for their support and continued to support. And, you know, we're going to continue to make sure that this county is great. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the uh, official business. May I please have a motion to approve communications? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Moved by Freeholder Mirabella, seconded by um, Freeholder Kowalski. Clerk of the Board, please call the roll. Freeholder Carter? Yes. Freeholder Estrada? Yes. Freeholder Hudak? Aye. Freeholder Jallo? Aye. Freeholder Kowalski? Yes. Freeholder Mirabella? Aye. Freeholder Wright? Yes. Vice Chairman Granados? Aye. Chairman Bergen? Yes. Chairman, you have nine votes in the affirmative. Thank you. We have uh, four sets of minutes to uh, consider tonight. May I please have a motion to waive the reading and accept the minutes of September 3rd, 2015 agenda session, <coughs> September 10, 2015 regular meeting, September 17, 2015 agenda setting session, and September 24, 2015 regular meeting. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Uh, again, we have a motion made by Freeholder Mirabella, seconded by Freeholder Kowalski. Clerk of the Board, please call the roll. Freeholder Carter? I will abstain from September the 10th regular meeting and September the 17th agenda meeting. Yes to the rest. Freeholder Estrada? Yes to all. Freeholder Hudak? 
at all. Brother Jallo? Aye. Brother Kowalski? Yes. Brother Mirabella? Aye to all. Brother Wright? Yes to all. Vice Chairman Granados? Aye to all. And Chairman Bergen? Yes to all. Uh, Chairman, for the minutes of the September 3rd agenda setting session, you have nine votes in the affirmative. For the uh, September, for the minutes of the September 10th uh, regular meeting, you have eight votes in the affirmative with one abstention. For the minutes of the September 17th uh, agenda setting session, you have eight votes in the affirmative with one abstention. And for the minutes of the September 24th regular meeting, you have nine votes in the affirmative. Thank you. Now we have an ordinance for introduction. Clerk of the Board, please read the ordinance by title. Ordinance number 770-2016, an ordinance amending the Union County District Solid Waste Management Plan to, one, include the waste management of New Jersey, Inc. facilities in Elizabeth, New Jersey, as the county's designated facilities to which solid waste types 13, 13C, 23, and 27 are directed for disposal, two, incorporate the Solid Waste Disposal Services Agreement by and between the Union County Utilities Authority and Waste Management of New Jersey, Inc. for the provision of disposal services for solid waste types 13, 13C, 23, and 27, and three, direct all solid waste types 13, 13C, 23, and 27 to the Waste Management of New Jersey, Inc. facilities in Elizabeth, New Jersey for disposal pursuant to regulatory waste flow control. Thank you. Freeholder Hudak, would you please move ordinance number 770-2016. Thank you, Chairman. I move ordinance number 770-2016 for first reading and authorize clerk of the board to advertise same in accordance with the law. The final reading and public hearing are scheduled for February 11th, 2016. May I have a second, please? Second. Motion was made by Freeholder Hudak, seconded by Freeholder Mirabella. Clerk of the Board, please call the roll. Freeholder Carter? Yes. Freeholder Estrada? Yes. Freeholder Hudak? Aye. Freeholder Jallo? Aye. Freeholder Kowalski? Yes. Freeholder Mirabella? Aye. Freeholder Wright? Yes. Vice Chairman Granados? Aye. Chairman Bergen? Yes. Chairman, you have nine <coughs> votes in the affirmative. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. <clears throat> the meeting is now open to the public for purposes of commenting on resolutions being offered for adoption only. Kindly state your name and town of residence for the record and the resolution to which you are referring and please adhere to the five minute time limit. Bef before we begin, I just do want to make um, one, one quick note to the public. Uh, at our organizational meeting uh, on January 3rd of this year, we did make some uh, wording changes to our bylaws, in particular as concerns meetings and comments at meetings. I draw that to everyone's attention. They are posted on the doors leading into the chamber and they do apply to uh, all public comment sessions. So please uh, do note the rules. They're not particularly different, but I think they uh, hopefully clarify our rules a little bit and please abide by them during your comments. Thank you. Uh, it's too long, I'm, I'm not gonna read that. But they are posted outside uh, each end of the room. Please proceed. Okay. Maria Echevarria, Elizabeth, New Jersey. Uh, number 49, I have a question on that. Like, what do these things do? Like, these people, like, what's a county advisory group? Uh, justice involvement services, what does that entitle? Um, number 50, um, your advisory, Union County Advisory Board on the disabled with the bylaws, what does that, you know, do? Um, I'm sorry, could you just keep your voice up a little? I'm having trouble hearing you. Uh -oh. just. Um, let's see, is that better? I'm sure that was better. Um, 51, uh, let's see. And 90 to 90, 90, I know 91, yeah, 90 and 91. Like I see that there's um, some type of something with a whole bunch of law books or something. Now I know you guys took out the 
law library or supposedly it was the state that took out the law library out the count the courthouse so and but this is for um, various departments you know agencies and so forth so are people that's related to those agencies allowed to have access to those law books when we need to dispute things and stuff because I know they don't give that much of an easy time trying to look up the codes when you're disputing various agencies so I don't know who gets to have access to these law books and stuff okay thank you thank you County Council can you <coughs> Uh, 90 and 91, uh, no, those, those books are uh, for the departments and agencies of the county. They are not accessible by the public. Uh, Director Guzzo, maybe you can um, respond concerning 50, concerning the uh, Union County Advisory Board on the Disabled. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, the reason for this resolution is because the advisory board bylaws have not had not been updated since 1995. So the reason for the uh, up, up, for updating them and voted on by the advisory board for the disabled was to put more uh, have more inclusion, uh, use different terms that were used in '95, and basically to update them and clean them up to make sure that they meet the needs of today relative to the board in general. Thank you. And um, as to number 49, the Mental Health Advisory Board, that is a uh, board of uh, citizens who do uh, help advise the county on certain contracts that we give out during the year. And um, I, did, I was a representative to that board the past year. And um, I think that answers your question. They, they are volunteers who help guide the county in in our uh, mental health services thank you is any other members of the public which who wish to make a comment on any resolution that is on for consideration this evening good evening chair bergen ladies and gentlemen the freeholder board bruce patterson garwood New Jersey, and uh, congratulations uh, for being the, on your election and for being the chair. Thank you. On page two, uh, resolution 35, 36, and 38, these are for design, construction, and administration and inspection services to Remington and Vernick that total $684,000. I'm not going to get into exactly what these are, the bridges. But anyway, $684,000 total in three contracts. I just want to point out that Remington and Vernick donated $10,000 in the last four years to the freeholders and their cronies. Uh, on the same page, 37 and 42, which is on the next page, goes to Neglia uh, for design, construction, management, and inspection services. That's $156,000. They know, donated to the freeholders and the cronies $19,000 in the last four years. And it's strange thing, all this money, this is not even uh, having a shovel in the ground. All it is is, is brain think, you know, so that's almost a million dollars right there. Uh, on the next page, three, number 40 and 45 is to T&M Associates. That's $152,000 total in contracts. They donated to the freeholders and the cronies $94,000 in four years. CME, which is number 41 and 44, contracts, $390,000. They donated to the freeholders and the cronies $123,000 in four years. Uh, Supli Clooney, uh, page five, uh, number 60, just a comment, uh, $3,600 in four years. They have uh, uh, the audit contract, although there is no dollar amount. Uh, that's a question, what's the dollar amount on that one? Uh, 61, number 61 is interesting because it's freeholder Alexander Mirabella authorized the county manager to adjust or, or change the internal position control schedule. This was not on the agenda setting from last week. So for transparency for the public, because I wasn't able to, uh, Oprah and even understand what this is, I would really like you guys to read what exactly this internal position control schedule for the public for transparency. 
uh, that, that's an issue there because uh, who knows you might be putting relatives on the payroll and the public's not aware of it so you're gonna have to read down all the names involved in that <laughs> for the public on page 7 uh, number 74 and number 75 uh, this is it $109,000 and another this is it for $120,000 these are uh, uh, concerts that they're, you're uh, putting on. I'm just wondering, does that include uh, payment for the bands involved? Uh, page 8, number 79, uh, insurance coverage on machinery, laundry equipment, and lab equipment, $300,000. That's a big number. I don't, I don't know, if somebody could just explain why that's so much. Uh, number 81 and 82 is Brown and Brown. Um, they're involved with some small, about $20,000, but they donated $11,000 to the freeholders and the cronies in the last four years. Uh, oh, uh, page 10. Number 98, uh, collective bargaining You're for the sheriff superior officers. Uh, I've asked these questions before and I never really get a good comprehensive answer but I'd really like to know about the health benefits in the spirit of transparency. I don't want to hear somebody saying, oh, they're similar to the other health benefits. I want to know exactly what the health benefits are. So if somebody could come up here and give me detail of what they are, not just similar to the other bargaining. Uh, same page, number 96, a contract to Bauch Zucker. He donated $43,000 in four years. Uh, item 97, Weber Dowd, he donated $10,000 in the last four years. Uh, number 99, winning strategies. I always would, I used to come to the very, the swearing in and talk about that because you used to have that on the uh, agenda. But, but $138,000, uh, you know, I've really seen nothing from them all these years. You used to spend $150,000, you dropped it to $138,000. I, I'm, I'm just giving you a heads up. I'll probably be Oprah, some kind of work product. I'd like to see what they do, maybe the emails involved, as to actually see why we're spending $138,000. So if you could answer those couple questions, and a lot of them were comments just on uh, donations to the freeholders. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. Um, Um, concerning 2016-61, um, Freeholder Mirabella? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I did bring it up um, that I had an, a resolution that was going to be going on the agenda uh, during the um, agenda meeting. Um, I think the county manager can speak a little bit to the specifics, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the, uh, the position of control relates to uh, our Department of Administration. Thank you. Um, 74 and 75, Director Zuber, can you respond to that question, please? Through you, Mr. Chairman, yes, that includes the price uh, for the talent. Thank you. Um, number 79, Acting Director Yuska, can you just explain? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, through you, um, what this uh, insurance does is because we have so much equipment in the county, uh, we find it more prudent to hire an underwriter to manage those accounts. So not only does he arrange for the vendors that we choose to repair those, he o also monitors those, the bills. Um, in the case of the um, prosecutor's lab, which uh, totals $85,000 uh, out of that $300,000, um, they tried to bill us for airfare from California even though the technician was coming from New Jersey. So specialty nicks that bill and wouldn't pay it. So those are the, some of the things they do if they have some kind of outrageous repair on it. But the bulk of this is, is, um, is like I said, for uh, $85,000 for the prosecutors for the lab and a lot of security equipment like the uh, x-ray machines are, are 50. Uh, facilities, the print shop, various electronics is 26, and the laundry equipment for the jail and everything else is uh, about 19,000. So that's how it adds up to that figure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, concerning Ms. number 98, um, I'm sure Mr. Patterson, you can uh, understand that uh, I'm not going to have somebody read the full uh, extent of the insurance coverage 
uh, into a meeting record. Um, those contracts, of course, are public documents once they're signed. So um, that information as to the specifics is available, but um, I, I think it would be a waste of time to just read them off here at the meeting. But thank you for that question as well. Um, any other member of the public who wishes to comment on pending resolutions only? Yeah, uh, John Burry of Kenilworth. Uh, uh, just one follow-up and one new one on this thing. Uh, on the Supply Clooney one, uh, wherever that is. Oh, let's see. Oh, so 80, that's 60. I'm sorry, what number was it? That's 60, page 60. 5. Thank you. Um, basically, I just like specifics in that every audit I've ever seen that's available going back to 2000 has been Supply Clooney. Uh, when did they come on as, and who was the accountant before them? I mean, what year? I guess it was the last century sometime. Um, and what audits do they do? I mean, is it Uni County, Uni County Improvement Authority, or it's just merged with the Uni County? Oh, what is their, uh, how many audits do they do for the county? And the last part is, is anyone else, is, are these the only accountants who have been looking at the county for, well, will you tell me how long they started? Uh, like, and the last thing is uh, this uh, 87, the uh, intervention strategies, 52, 360. Uh, it, that's just vague. Like it's, it's comprehensive employee assistance program, EAP for county employees and their families. Uh, what exactly is the assistance? And is this, been, is this a new thing or has this been you know, going on all these years? That's it. Just those. Thank you. Director Taylor, maybe is she here? OK, if you could um, tell us the number of audits that uh, Supply Clooney does and so on. Good evening. Through you, Mr. Chair. Supley Clooney is engaged to perform the audits of departments and constitutional offices associated with the County of Union. It does not perform the audits on this resolution for outside agencies. Specifically, I can tell you that we ha are required by law to do the statutory audit in compliance with state regulations, the A133 single audit for federal and state grants, as well as for our deferred comp plans, all of the constitutional offices, as I mentioned, the Cornerstone, Cornerstone Hospital, our correctional facilities, as well as our CDBG grants, aging grants, all grants that are in compliance that we need for federal dollars. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, number 87, Acting Director Yuska, could you just explain what the EAP is, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the EAP is a 24-hour day, 360 days a year, immediate access for emergency consultation, referral, conflict resolution, support services, problem solving, professional coaching, and critical incident intervention. It also provides our employees and family me members and significant others with any information referral services. There's a laundry list of things that they could help with anywhere. I'll just read a couple marital issues, uh, adoption, alcohol, drug problems, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there any other members of the public who wish to speak on any pending resolution? Seeing none, then I would call for a motion, please, to adopt resolutions 2016-34 through 2016-111. So moved. Second. Moved by Freeholder Kowalski, seconded by Freeholder Mirabella. Clerk of the Board, please call the roll. Freeholder Carter? Yes. Freeholder Estrada? Yes. Freeholder Hudak? Aye. Freeholder Jallo? Aye. Freeholder Kowalski? Yes. Freeholder Mirabella? Aye. Freeholder Wright? Yes. Vice Chairman Granados? Aye. And Chairman Bergen? Aye. Chairman, you see? <coughs> Sorry about that, Chair. <laughs> you have you nine okay? votes in the affirmative. Uh, you all right? Now I am. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we now come to that portion of the meeting where members of the public may comment on any governmental issue 
that a member of the public feels may be of concern to the residents of the county. Once again, please give your name, town of residence, and please abide by the five minute time limit. Anyone wishing to speak? Good evening, Chairman Bergen. Bergen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the freeholder board, Bruce Patterson Garwood. Uh, first, I, you know, I, I'd like to compliment, I don't know if I've done this before, but I'd like to compliment uh, your employee, Mike Yeska. You know, it, 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 he's always on the ball, he, he seems well knowledgeable, and he actually cares, I guess, financially for the taxpayers. I mean, he, he caught this, this airfare they tried to slip by and he nixed it. So, so I mean, I appreciate what he does for the county so uh, you know he's not paying me to say this by the way but uh <laughs> no th there was another there's another time i remember i was looking i don't know wherever wherever a bunch of employees went maybe to, to hawaii or whatever on some kind of seminar trip so i'm, I'm looking through all the all the um, invoices and the receipts and i'll tell you so many uh and comparing it to the uh expense reports and so many so many employees it was a lot of it was lacking, but Mike Yuska's every single receipt was there in order. The, the guy's an amazing guy. I, I'll tell you, if Alpha Ella, the county manager, steps steps down. I'll I'll advocate for Mr. Yuska. So, <laughs> thank you very much, Mike. Oh boy. <laughs> in, in addition, I, and I I left it behind, but I I did look. I, I did. I did look uh, <laughs> at your. I, I have no idea what to say right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know I thank you guys once in a while. I also hold your feet to the fire, which I will. You know, don't worry. The year just started out. I, you know, I'm being nice to you guys. And, wow. But anyway, but um, I, I did read the initiatives, and, and I just want to get the initiative. Right. No worries. It's t it, clock is oh, rolling. Well, anyway. <laughs> but but uh, now. Uh, Chairman Bergen, I, you know, I read your initiatives. There's a lot of them. You actually had a lot of them, which, which is, is good because, uh, you know, you're saying what you're planning to do this coming year, and, and I appreciate it. Some of them actually have, have uh, good teeth to it, let's say. Uh, you know, the past years, people's initiatives are kind of tepid. It wasn't like I had pizzazz, but, but, you know, you're saying your new loans for small businesses through Union County Economic Development Corporation. Uh, that's good. I mean, you know, New Jersey's economy sucks, and, and this is good. I mean, we need, we need that. We need that. Union County Workforce Innovation Center, uh, more job opportunities. That, that's pretty common in a lot of the initiatives, but it, I do appreciate that. Seniors in Motion. That, that's, I'm now a senior, by the way, and it provides vans for senior transportation. This was done a couple of years ago, and you're bringing it back, and I, I appreciate that. Uh, the fire departments with compatible radios, you want to you want to equip the fire departments that that's a good idea i appreciate it that has deep and and you also the uh, animal control services you want to uh, create a shared service on animal control and that i know many years ago uh, <coughs> we had a presentation by harbor uh, consultants on a building up at the quarry you're bringing that somehow it fell by the wayside so but i, I do appreciate your initiatives uh, many of them are pretty decent now <coughs> getting back to the norm you know, I came up to the microphone and I, and I did ask a couple of questions and somehow they get dismissed. Uh, I mean, you know, yes, the public, there, there's some kind of notification at the door that, you know, nobody knows about, obviously, but it's there. And I said, well, can you read it? No, it's too long. So what's the sense of putting it on the door? I mean, you know, if it's too long, just sum it up. You know, is it Mr. Patterson should not be speaking more than one minute, something like that? I don't know. But, you know, you should, you should at least explain to the people. There are a couple other ones. I, the internal position controls. I said it wasn't brought on the agenda. Nobody knew about it. Uh, Al Mayor Bell at the end said, oh yeah, I'm, I'm adding a resolution, and, and that was it. How the heck are we supposed to know if you're not putting all your relatives on the payroll? Somehow the public needs to know. And so I wanted to know what that was about. I got dismissed. Another one was uh, the health benefits. I was hoping uh, Director Albert would come up and explain the health benefits, because the public has a right to know. The public has a need to know, and it's called transparency. And you said it's a waste of time. Now, maybe, maybe you misspoke. I don't know. Is it a waste of time, the public speaking here, asking questions, hoping that the freeholders or the directors will answer questions, hopefully? It's not a waste of time. I, I'll, just, I'll just 
chalk it up to uh, maybe you, you misspoke that. You really shouldn't have said those words. So have a good one. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. Just to be clear, I did not say that the public questioning was a waste of time. I said it would be a waste of time for someone to read a lengthy legal document into the record here when it's available to any member of the public to read whenever they want. That's what I said was a waste of time. Thank you. Anyone else from the public who has any comments on any governmental issue at this time? Maria Echevarria Elizabeth. Okay. Governmental issues would be use purchasing law books for you to have and your entities to have, but I do believe that because you're using county money or whatever it is to buy these books, I believe residents have a, a, should have access to these things when we are a one person fighting an entity when we are disputing against you, just so you know. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I might suggest many of the public libraries have uh, law books. There is access online to them, so uh, ho hopefully you can find that information. Thank you. Any other members of the public? Seeing no one else, I will close that portion of the meeting, and now I will call for freeholder reports and comments. Freeholder Kowalski. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think everybody has been paying attention to the weather reports. We've got another winter storm coming, so I'd like to take this opportunity to commend our Department of Human Services and all of our partner agencies for their efforts to make sure that every Union County resident has a warm, safe place to stay. Our Code Blue system <laughs> activates a network of county and municipal offices and nonprofit organizations that coordinate the delivery of extra beds, transportation, and other services that are needed during cold weather emergencies. So if you uh, know of someone who needs shelter, you can encourage them to reach out for, for help by visiting our Division of Social Services, which has locations in Elizabeth and Plainfield. And this is also a good time to remind county residents to be careful when operating a generator during power outages because, as we know, improper use can result in carbon monoxide poisoning, leading to potential fatal illness. And the basic rules include never running a generator indoors or near a window. Uh, your operator's manual can provide more details and uh, also might be a good idea to get your snow shovels ready. Um, and if you have a snow blower, um, check and make sure you have fuel and that it's working properly. And that's it for me. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Freeholder. Freeholder Carter. Thank you, Chairman. Again, I want to take an opportunity to thank the students that came out um, and we were able to <coughs> congratulate them on their winning project from the UC STEP this year. Almost over 200 students from 27 high schools joined us at our third annual Union County Student Training Enrich Enrichment Program Summit that was held at Kane University this past December. One of the things that they had to do is they had to come up with a community service <coughs> challenge and UC STEP challenge winners were the Garments and Gear Greatness for Years project which the students we were able to honor here today. With the support of this freeholder board, this spring high school students from all over Union County will be raising funds and collecting athletic gear for donation for students in need to help ensure that every youth in Union County has the equipment they need to participate in athletic sports, to participate in exercising, to be able to participate in those activities that they may not have had the chance before. And I commend those students for coming up with the idea, for brainstorming, for you know working together. And they work together with students that they never met before for the first time when they walked into that room. So that really shows how they can collaborate and partner and come up with winning ideas. For additional details about the program and the launch of when this will start and end, please make sure that you visit our website 
um, www.ucnj.org and please click on the UC STEP tab. Again, I commend all of our youth that came out to participate in December. It was a great day. They enjoyed it. We've gotten positive feedback, not just from the students, but also from their parents um, between text messages and emails and phone calls. So I appreciate the support for the support that they've given this for the past three years. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Freeholder. Freeholder Estrada? No reports this evening, Chair. Sorry? No report this evening. Okay. Thank you. Freeholder Mirabella? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as a lifelong resident, I've always appreciated how we can enjoy the seasonal activities of winter right here in Union County without having to deal with traffic or uh, issues uh, along those lines. With that in mind, keep in mind also that Echo Lake Park is open for sledding. If we get the snow that's expected, uh, some of the best sledding in Union County can be done right in Echo Lake Park. Uh, some of our parks are open for cross-country skiing. There are miles of, of trails for winter hiking and snowshoeing. Um, keep in mind also that Trailside Nature and Science Center is open seven days a week except for holidays. So take advantage of that jewel in the middle of the Watch Home Reservation. Uh, you can also come and enjoy the interactive exhibits free of charge or sign up for special programs and classes for all ages from toddlers on up. For details on the sledding schedule and skiing, uh, please check our website, ucnj.org, for that up-to-date information. And with that concludes my comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Freeholder Hudak. Thank you, Chairman. Just uh, one quick comment this evening. Um, as we are expecting the first significant snowfall of 2016, I'd like to let Union County residents know that we are looking for lifeguards in our pools. <laughs> 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 County residents age 16 and over uh, that are looking for a summer job, we have positions at two county pools in Rawway and Linden. Uh, Full-time and part-time schedules are available. We're always looking for good lifeguards. If you have, a, if you work from home or have a job that keeps you indoors, lifeguarding is a great opportunity to fill in some extra hours, make a little money, and uh, working outdoors in the fresh air. So, uh, as you're snowed in this weekend, think about what you might do this summer. Uh, you can get more details by calling our facility offices at the Warnaco Ice Skating Rink and that number is 908-298-7849 or email warnaco at ucnj.org that's w-a-r-i-n-a-n-c-o at ucnj.org be safe everyone thank you chairman thank you freeholder jalo no report at this time thank you freeholder Wright. yes thank you i do have um the report as we prepare for this stormy weekend it's a comforting to look ahead to the first signs of spring, and I know you're questioning our look in that far ahead at this time. <laughs> and with that in mind, I would like to draw your attention to the annual St. Patrick's Day Parade in my hometown, the Township of Union. This event is one of the largest of its kind in New Jersey, and it is a great source of pride for the whole community. As always, the Freeholder Board is supporting the parade. And earlier this month, I was honored to join with Vice Chairman Granados and Freeholder Hudak, Kowalski, and Carter to present a check to the parade committee doing its fundraiser at the Kenilworth Veterans Center. The annual St. Patrick's Day Parade draws thousands of people, young and old, from Union County and beyond for an afternoon of marching, music, dance, and festival attractions. Please join us and mark your calendars for Saturday, March the 12th at 1 p.m. Morris Avenue in the center of Union. You can get more details at Union County St. Patrick's Day Parade.com. With that, I conclude my report. Thank you, Freeholder. County Council, anything to report? Uh, no comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. County Manager? No comments, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> thank you. Uh, Vice Chair uh, Granados? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, next week on the 27th, the County of Union, through the Department of Human Services, the Sheriff's Office, and our partner agencies will be hosting Homeless Point in Time Survey. 
whether they're spending their early morning hours seeking out and assisting the homeless. We conduct this annual survey as part of a national effort by the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development with the aim of identifying needs so that we may leverage federal and state support to help people in transition to permanent safe housing. I'd like to thank in advance all the volunteers who are going to be helping out on that cold chilly morning and I thank Department of Health and Human Services for all their work in making sure we provide assistance and find housing for the people who are living on the street. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Vice Chairman. One of the things I spoke about when I was sworn in as chairman uh, a few weeks ago was uh, the importance of transportation to the County of Union and the, the need to upgrade and expand our transportation network, which serves hundreds of thousands of residents, people who work here, and visitors as well. Tonight we got off to a great start by awarding engineering contracts for four bridges in a significant step forward to ensure that our county bridges are up to date with modern safety and transportation standards. We also re recently received word that the county will receive a grant of $1.1 million through the North Jersey Transportation Planning Authority for intersection improvements along East Front Street in Plainfield. These upgrades will improve traffic flow along this key hub while contributing to a downtown that is friendlier to pedestrians and cyclists. As some of you may know, the planning authority plays a critical role in our ability to advocate for transportation improvements in North Jersey. That being said, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate freeholder Angel Estrada, who was recently elected to serve as the first vice chairman of the Planning Authority Board. As a longtime member of the Authority, Freeholder Estrada has been a tireless advocate for Union County and for all of North Jersey, and we're all looking forward to many more years of progress as he takes on a new leadership position at the Authority. Thank you, Freeholder. I will just add my wishes for a, a safe, Weekend to all and call for a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Good night.